Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem published an opinion piece in the Financial Times this morning, and it kind of sucks because it's behind a paywall, so nobody can see it unless you've got a subscription to the Financial Times, which I think I'm about the only person I know of other than a few other media contacts that actually have one. So I'm gonna go through and talk about what he talked about. And there's some controversy here because of course the mainstream media picked up on this opinion piece and they wrote several headlines, all very similar, but really missed out on the greater aspects of what Tiff said. So a little bit of controversy today. That's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how Tiff Macklem is approaching the economy as we come out of the pandemic. The definitive guide on how to manage your credit, product, penalty, price, in that order. It's never been more important to get your mortgage right. Okay, so a little bit of controversy on today's video. You know, first and foremost, I don't like the way that this opinion piece by Tiff Macklem was rolled out, primarily because it is behind a paywall that costs you $99 a month to see what the Bank of Canada governor is saying, unless you want to go and read the news articles that basically paraphrase what he said, but don't actually capture exactly what he said. And there's no way to verify that those news articles are accurate because you can't get to it unless you want to pay $100 a month. So. I'm gonna start by saying first and foremost, if the Bank of Canada governor says something, puts out an article, the Bank of Canada should go ahead and make sure that those articles are not behind a paywall and that all Canadians have access to them so that they can make their own opinions and develop their own context around the conversation that's actually being had. But before we get into the video and all the details of it, and I think this one's important because it really talks about what's gonna happen going forward with the economy, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video and don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers where one lucky subscriber is going to win five thousand dollars to pay, put towards their mortgage maybe their down payment maybe pay off debt whatever they like but one thing is for certain you have to be subscribed to win it's free it's easy and it's definitely worth it oh and by the way last week we were talking a lot about our down payment challenge we had a whole bunch of people signed up it was priced at 97 dollars. if you paid 97 dollars, you got a thousand dollar credit with mortgage 360 for your mortgage over the weekend, I was putting the course material together and what I realized was that while we were helping a large number of people already, we wanted to help more and there was a bigger opportunity here. And we also realized that the people who were saving their down payment and were having trouble saving their down payment were also a little bit wary about taking $97 out of that down payment fund and risking it on a guy named Nolan Mathias on YouTube and trusting that he was actually going to get them that $97 back if they took the challenge. So what we did is today we reworked the whole thing. It's now a five day challenge instead of a 30 day challenge. And it is completely free for you to join if you would like to. All you have to do is go to downpaymentchallenge.ca, sign up and the entire thing is completely free. There is a VIP piece that you can get as well. You can purchase that for the $97 and then that way you can get the $1,000 credit with Mortgage 360. You'll also get our Home Buyer Bootcamp course and a couple other things, including a 30 minute call with me. But if you wanna join and you wanna do the freebie thing, that's totally cool. I'll show you five ways to increase your down payment and do it faster. And if you wanna join the VIP and get a little bit more, totally up to you. But again, downpaymentchallenge.ca and I would love to have you join us on that journey or if you are in the process of saving your down payment and getting those funds ready for when you do eventually purchase. So that being said, let's get into the video. Let's talk about what's going on with Tiff Macklin, Bank of Canada and the Financial Times. So I'll show you first and foremost, I wanna show you the headline as Tiff Macklem wrote it. The headline in the Financial Post here, or the Financial Times, sorry, this is not the Financial Post. This is the Financial Times. Again, this is all behind a paywall. You can't see it unless you've paid for the subscription. Uh, central banks will stay on the alert as they guide the recovery. This was the headline and the subtitle is progress in overcoming the pandemic's effects is faster than expected, but monetary stimulus is still required. So this is what the headline for the Tiff Macklem article was, I wanna show you how this got covered pretty much by all the media in Canada. Here is Global News, Bank of Canada's getting closer to raising rates, governor says. That's not the title that the governor made, but that's the way that this is being covered by Global News. Then we go to the Financial Post, Bank of Canada, getting closer to raising interest rates, says Governor Tiff Macklem. Again, not exactly the title Tiff wrote, but hey, this is the title it ended up getting with the Financial Post. Then you get BNN Bloomberg, who I always find is just a little bit better at writing headlines, a little bit more concise, a little bit sharper. Bank of Canada getting closer to raising rates, Macklem says. 
So these are basically the articles that came out of this. And what I want to show you is I want to show you basically the actual things that Tiff Macklem said and talk about what they mean. And there's three lessons that Tiff pointed out from this whole pandemic thing and how they're approaching monetary policy going forward. And I think this will give you a lot of insight as to how you should be planning your finances and what you should be watching instead of just the media headlines. So you can have a broader, more informed approach to what's actually happening with the Bank of Canada and so on and so forth. So really interesting article. Obviously, this is behind a paywall. This is somebody else's material. So I'm not going to show you everything, but I am allowed to show you snippets under copyright law. And I want to show you basically the three things that he talks about. First of all, um, he talks about the three lessons that have come from the pandemic. Um, the first is to be bold on entry and plan for exit during times like this. Um, so basically what he's talking about here is anytime you have a major pandemic, the, the key is to be bold and they were bold. They started a they started a quantitative easing program. They started lowering interest rates and they started purchasing assets. So mortgage backed securities and whatnot almost immediately at the beginning of the pandemic to stabilize the market. They were bold, they were quick, and they had a plan for the reopening of the economy and how they would handle monetary policy. And the big key lesson here is that they were going to be clear about that policy. So they were going to be clear about messaging it because this is the thing that they did wrong in 2010, 2011, 2012, was they weren't clear on their messaging and they surprised the markets and they actually created a lot of turmoil in the markets when they did that, when they started raising interest rates after the financial crisis. So the first lesson here that they're talking about is being be bold and have a plan and communicate it well. That I think is hugely important. And by the way, when it comes to economics and monetary policy and whatnot, sometimes communicating what you're going to do has just as much of an effect as actually doing it. So you can say that you're going to increase interest rates sooner and that can actually have a similar effect in an economy is actually increasing the interest rates. Now, the reason why TIFF is out here writing this and, and the reason why the Bank of Canada is communicating this so much right now is because what they're trying to make clear to Canadians is that they are serious about the economy. They are serious about watching inflation. They haven't lost control and that they are paying attention to inflationary costs and the increased costs of living that Canadians are having. Because the problem is if they don't do that and people start to believe that inflation is a major problem, then it can lead to more inflation, a self-fulfilling prophecy, and you can start seeing prices go up more and more and more and more because people start buying things sooner than they normally would because they're trying to make sure they don't have to pay more for it a month or two or three months down the road, right? So this is why they're, they're being so clear about their communication and they're being so clear about trying to make sure that Canadians know that they're watching inflation and they're paying attention to it. Now, the second thing that they talk about here with respect to their second lesson is that when faced with a unique crisis, it is better to focus on outcomes than on timelines. So in the past, it's always been about when do you think the Bank of Canada is going to increase interest rates? And they always talked about a timeline. Is it now? Is it six months from now? Is it a year from now? And what they're making clear here is that it's not about timelines. It's not about forecasts. It's not about guesses. Forecasts change, right? As you get new data, the forecasts change pretty much on a real time basis, right? And as you get new inflation numbers or new employment numbers or new GDP numbers, that's going to adjust the forecast. So what they're trying to focus on here is not when do we increase interest rates, but what has to happen for us to increase interest rates. And they have been astonishingly clear on this front. Basically, what they've said is that in order for interest rates to start increasing, they need to see the economy at full steam. So in other words, the potential for the economy and the amount that the economy is actually producing have to be equal. That's how they will know when it's time to increase interest rates. Now, what they have said in the last month is that could be anywhere from April to the end of the second quarter next year. They've moved up the timeline because again, it's not about timelines, it's about when they actually think that that outcome of growth matching potential is going to actually be met. So, you know, I think this is great because what they're saying here is very clear around what the what the actual mechanisms are in the economy that would cause them to increase interest rates are. So that's really, really important. And then that leads to the third lesson and just kind of popping you back over into this article. Um, be prepared for the unexpected and be humble. And what Tiff is talking about here, when he's talking about be prepared for the unexpected and be humble, is he is talking about the fact that they didn't expect transitory inflation to last as long as it has. Now, some people are saying transitory inflation is not, it's not transitory, right? It, it is transitory because what transitory inflation is, is transitory inflation is things that are temporary, that are not long lasting. So things like 
disruptions in supply or increased demand due to a pandemic, those are transitory. They may last longer than expected, but they were definitely transitory. Now, what's going to be interesting is what happens as we come out of the pandemic here. We're all obviously coming out of it from a going out and being able to do regular things standpoint, but what's going to happen as the economy recovers? And are we going to see the things like the supply issues go away and therefore prices on everything start to come down because all of a sudden we have all the supply hit the market and prices have to be slashed and then we end up having a deflationary period or are we going to see demand continue to rise and wages rise obviously energy energy prices are playing huge into this by the way when energy prices start to go up what typically happens is that starts to increase the price of most goods but it increases it to the point where the costs are higher, not necessarily the profits, and it ultimately turns into higher costs for everything, which leads to less growth and less spending, which ends up turning into a recession. So higher energy costs aren't necessarily associated with inflation. They're actually associated with lower inflation, which could lead to lower interest rates down the road. And I think the reality of it is this, is we're going to have this period of time where we're going to have high inflation, and then we may have inflation or low inflation, and then we're going to have high inflation again, and we're going to basically spend the next 5, 10, 15 years in this balancing act where we're bumping back and forth, but we pretty much remain at low interest rates for a long period of time. Now, that's my belief. That's because we can look back at what's happened in other periods of time, like just after World War I, when we had massive inflation, and then we had massive of deflation and it jumped back and forth and we had really low rates for a really, really long time. It seems to me that that's the type of situation that we're in right now. But really the great thing here and what we have is we have Tiff Macklem, Bank of Canada, coming out and saying publicly what he's learned, saying publicly how they're going to handle things going forward, saying publicly that, you know what, they were wrong about how long transitory inflation would last and they're humble about it. They aren't going to stick to their guns just in order to stick to their guns and say that they were right. They're watching things on a regular basis and when they are wrong, they're going to make adjustments. When they were wrong about transitory inflation being short-lived and ends up being longer-lived, they're going to make adjustments for that and ultimately, they're going to change rates when the outcomes that they're looking for, which is you know, a little bit better employment, but mostly full growth in the economy and a fully functioning economy, that's when they're going to increase interest rates. So I love the fact that they're out here being clear about things. I love the fact that they are communicating well. What I don't love is that they're doing it with publications that put it behind a paywall. You know, I might go so far as to say to the Financial Times, shame on you for not letting all Canadians see what was actually written here, because it is a really great article that people should be able to see. And it should be public information. This should be posted on the Bank of Canada's website so that all people can see exactly where Tiff Macklem is at instead of just going, oh, Bank of Canada says we're getting closer to higher interest rates and fail to mention the three things that he brings up as being important lessons during this pandemic time. So if you found this video useful, do me that favor, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Don't forget about our race 25,000 subscribers. Don't forget about our down payment challenge. I'm really looking forward to you joining us on that and we'll see you on the very next video. Cheers.